Today we're going to talk about some more tech censorship. Just to really drive home the point that you cannot trust the media. You cannot trust social media. And you can't trust most of the media. But on that point, I would like to say that uh, there are a few places that uh, you can trust. The Epoch Times, Just the News. None of them have endorsed the show. None of them pay for advertising, whatever. That's just my own personal opinion. Those are great sites to subscribe to directly and go out and find uh, information, data, what's going on in the world. I'm going to read this from an editor of the New York Post, one of the nation's largest papers by circulation. Can't post on their own site their own story detailing the corruption of Joe Biden and his son, Hunter Biden. And he has a picture on Twitter of the tweet saying, tweet not sent. Your tweet couldn't be sent because this link has been identified by Twitter and our partners as being potentially harmful. Visit our help center to learn more. And as I was reading that story and I was preparing for the show, I saw other people who were being censored on YouTube for their speech and for their cussing and those things when they don't even cuss, when they don't even use inflammatory language. And they're just talking about facts and data of the day. It's not just that we're being censored, guys. We're being conditioned. And I'm worried and I'm concerned about where this is going to lead because there is a fraction of people who knows if it's a silent majority or it is truly a fraction of the masses that understand this. And I'm not sure what's going to come from it. But it's not going to be good. When you have 1.8 million addresses not verified and updated by the post office before they sent off the mail ballots, right? The difference between mail-in ballots and and um, absentee ballots is that you are verified as an absentee ballot. The mail-in ballots are just sending them out and you're not requesting them. And that is the conflation that is happening, that they're one and the same. They are not. And we have 1.8 million that weren't verified. So up to 1.8 million of those, just at least, not including all the others that were verified and fraudulent or stolen or not turned in or whatever it is, 1.8 million at least are potential ripe for fraud and taking away from the integrity of our voting process. And we have known now that we have businesses and companies hiding, shaping, conditioning us. And there's groups of people that know it. And I'm concerned that if the election goes awry, that is that there seems to be any kind of falsity or conspiracy or any of those things. If it doesn't look like an honest election, I think it's going to get really rowdy in our country. Oh, my goodness, I'm just going off because, you know, this is really uh, disturbing to me. But I need to say this is How to Build a Tent. Thank you for listening, sharing the show. We're part of the Fight Life Feast Network. Go over to FLFnetwork.com, put in HDBT in a memo field, become a member, help support us as we proclaim the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life and help and keep you informed. And we keep trying to tell you the truth. I mean, this is one of the places where you need to subscribe and help continue to keep this platform alive. Um, and being able to give you a Christian perspective, not just to be accurate about it, but a Christian perspective. Another thing that Twitter did on top of blocking a bombshell, a corruption case. And I heard, I was listening to Mayor Giuliani that there's some photos coming out in the next five days as well. We'll see how long those are blocked. And on top of that, I just shared an article before recording the show. We'll see how long it gets before this gets censored and taken down. But the FBI confiscated a Hunter Biden computer. They really confiscated it. They really uh, have the information for that. And we'll see what comes from that and how much of that that Twitter and Facebook and let you um, Twitter and Facebook let you hear about that story. But here we go. So we have this New York Post case talking about the corruption of Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. And they block it. They say you can't send it. You can't send an article from your own paper, your own publication. You can't post it on your own profile. Nah, that doesn't sound like a pub, uh, a platform to me. That sounds like a publisher. A publisher. Twitter just had an executive leave to go consult for Biden's transition team. 
Seems like election interference to some. Also, Twitter, Mr. Matira, I don't know how I'm saying his name. It's at M-R-M-A-I-T-R-A, Matria, Matria, posts that same article of Hunter Biden that you're not allowed to ban in the United, or that you're not allowed to post in America, in the United States. It's banned here. Is able to post it in the UK. So Twitter is not not allowing things based on fact. They're not allowing it based on political agenda or it should be banned everywhere. I mean, that's just one of the reasons why we know it's not fact-based. There's a hundred reasons why we know it's not fact-based because we know this is true. This is actually happening. The FBI has taken control of Hunter Biden's computer, but Twitter is not allowing the United States citizens to be informed on their voting. They're not allowing them to see and be exposed to the corruption of Joe Biden. But they're allowing the news in other countries because they can't vote. There's a political agenda here. They're shaping us. They're conditioning us. They're trying to leave us ignorant. And they're doing it under the protection of the law. They should go to jail. They should go to jail for election interference. They should go to jail for corruption, for collusion. They should go to jail. And that's not my legal opinion on it, obviously. Um, I don't know the specific laws. I'm not referencing laws, but uh, this is evil and this is wicked. I would love if there would be people that if you're an attorney and listening and could like actually give us some cases or some laws, I should say, of where these people uh, could be put put to jail and be held accountable. And I just you think of things like Enron, which that whole thing by Robert Mueller, Mueller, who was leading that back in the investigation was it 90s, early 90s. They went to jail because they defrauded investors, a publicly traded company. They were cooking the books. They were making the company seem more valuable than it was. They were reporting cash that they didn't have or revenues or something to that effect. They were misleading the investors. The Facebook and Twitters are doing the same thing. It might not be technical financials. It might not have to do specifically with the stock market, but the heart is the same and the consequences are far greater because it's not just about money. So I don't know technically if there's laws for it, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Steve Dace. Oh, my Facebook just refreshed. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to be looking it up. Steve Dace had some more to talk about or more insight on this Hunter Biden thing. I'm pulling it up right now. The New York Times bo- or New York Post, sorry, New York, New York Times wouldn't dare post something like this. This is incredible. This is the story. This is the summarization of the story. You would think that this would be important for voters to hear. The whole time they were accusing Trump of Ukraine collusion, the Democrats were doing it themselves. That's what the story is about. For three years, the impeachment, the the spying on Trump, they were accusing him of what they were doing themselves. The Democrats project everything. Everything they accuse conservatives of or Republicans of, it's because they're doing it themselves. Number two, a shady foreign operative literally put in emails to Joe Biden's son, quote, how can you use your influence, which we're paying you for in parentheticals, because remember, he made like $400,000 to be on the board. And thanks, and quote, thanks for introducing us to the vice president, who then later did what they wanted him to do by using his leverage to get rid of the prosecutor looking into their business dealings a few months later. They, Joe Biden threatened Ukraine with pulling out their funding unless they fired the prosecutor that was investigating corruption in Ukraine. And so they brought, they brought Hunter Biden onto the board, paid him a lot of money at on a company he has no experience in, and then asked him and have emails, physical emails, saying that how are you going to use your influence to get rid of the prosecutor to, uh, pull, to stand in the way of justice? Number three, the whole time Trump was being impeached for pressing Ukraine to investigate shady Biden business dealings, the FBI was sitting on a laptop computer with prima facie evidence of such shadiness and said nothing. And then he says, I'm hearing there's going to be more on the Bidens and their dealings. There's corruption everywhere, guys. And it's discouraging, but we shouldn't be discouraged because we know who holds the truth. And the truth will set us free. And the truth has set us. Those who are gods have already been free. 
and that this will all be made right. And so we can get discouraged when we look in the weeds, when we look short term, but we got to remember the long term. And we got to be pro- proclaiming the truth as much as we can. We got to be proclaiming the gospel. We got to be proclaiming the lordship of Jesus to set us free from all of this. The FBI holding the documents that incriminate Joe Biden while persecuting Donald Trump for that by investigating and spying on Donald Trump for what Biden did. And they knew it and didn't do nothing. They did nothing. Facebook, Twitter, censoring. We live in a corrupt world, guys. We live in a corrupt world. And this is the thing, is this anxiety, and I think why I wanted to drive this home with a second episode to close out the week is this, is this feeling that I have of disgust of this, of wanting to find justice, of wanting to find integrity in businesses, in institutions, in people, is not owned by me. That is, I'm not the only one that feels this. Even the social justice warriors that truly believe in in justice and feel like there's they believe this narrative, even them have a faint understanding of what justice is and craves it, even though it's skewed and corrupted in sin. And so there are opportunities for us to set up institutions to advance and rank in institutions, to create our own institutions, to create our own organizations where we are pillars of, of faithfulness, where we are pillars of integrity, where we are pillars of light and truth because we are hungry for it. And the more that we see this corruption brought to light, the more disgusted and repealing and reviling of it we will be. And the more we will want to cling to what is virtuous. And so here is our opportunity to make those, to build those, to raise our families with those. Let's go do it. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you.